Hello everyone, it's Thursday, happy Friday Eve to you. It's your boy Koi, and I'm thankful to be hanging out with you right here this week on CNN 10. It's time to say goodbye to summertime because today is officially the first day of fall, also called autumnal equinox. Let's take 10 to break it all down. During the vernal and autumnal equinoxes, the sun is directly over the equator, so day and night are considered to be the same length. If you reside in the Northern Hemisphere, you know it as the start of fall, but folks down south of the equator, this equinox is actually the start of spring. This is not to be confused with a solstice though. Those are in the summer and the winter and represent the longest and shortest days of the year, respectively. So, when it comes to fall, you might be thinking about colder temperatures, pumpkin spice lattes, some football, or fallen leaves. And speaking of leaves, let's take a minute to learn why they actually change color in the fall. you to think about leaves on a tree as essentially mini solar panels. What they're able to do is fascinating. They are taking the sunlight in and through a process known as photosynthesis, they're able to transfer the sun's energy and create a chemical known as chlorophyll. Now, chlorophyll is key because it gives the leaves its green colors during the long summer months, but beneath the surface, the leaves actually always have the reds, the oranges, the yellows in place. While chlorophyll is there, it's there and it's green. While it's taken away in the shorter days and shorter months of the autumn, now you're releasing some of the true colors back to the surface. Of course, weather can play a role in this as well, especially in the vibrancy of it. When you have plenty of rainfall in the growing season or in the spring season, you're able to get plenty of good colors in early September, October, and November. If you have extreme heat, extreme drought in place, maybe a freeze, an early snowstorm, or even strong winds, certainly that can do damage. The leaves will not be there for you to see them in peak foliage. So hopefully you have a chance to get out there this year and enjoy the fall colors. Continuing our constitutional theme, 10 second trivia this week. Which branch of the US government is mentioned first in the constitution? The executive, the judicial, or the legislative? Answer is legislative. The branch's powers are laid out in Article 1 of the U.S. Constitution. Next up today, Call to Earth is looking at how to protect and conserve our planet by listening to it. Today we're headed to the rainforest hinterlands of the Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia, where a scientist is using a network of sound recording devices and artificial intelligence to track down an endangered and elusive species of bird. Behind us here is Perlingbrook Fall. And on the other side of this escarpment, you can actually see how the vegetation changes. For the past seven years, the research of acoustic ecologist, Dr. Daniela Texera, has focused on recording and analyzing the sounds of Australia's iconic black cockatoos. So we actually have sound recorders planted in that forest over there. She says the birds face a multitude of threats, including habitat loss and climate change, and that their dwindling numbers, low density, and cryptic nature make them really hard to find. Just having a bit of a look. You're much more likely to see this feeding sign than you are actually to see the birds themselves. With the particular project um, that we're doing today, this is programmed to record every single day from sunrise to sunset. With all of those hours of recordings to analyze, she also relies heavily on artificial intelligence. What we're looking at here is the detections of glossy black cockatoos that the machine learning has detected. So that's what they sound like. With her research, Daniela says they now have a complete understanding of the bird's vocalizations and can even train the AI to identify the most exciting moment of a cockatoo's life, leaving the nest. Fledging is the moment when the baby bird leaves the nest and I've been able to train algorithms to help me detect that automatically. And that's how we can actually detect breeding success and measure it in really big ways. About 1,800 kilometers northeast of Gold Coast sits Yorka Reserve, a 
remote parcel of land owned and managed by Bush Heritage Australia. Daniela also works as a researcher for this conservation-minded organization. Yorker is situated in what we consider to be a resilient landscape, so it's likely to offer refugia from climate change in the future for quite a large number of species. Just under a year ago, four new solar-powered recording stations were installed here, and today she is back to collect the data for the first time. Look how nice and dry it is in there. The sensors are part of the Australian Acoustic Observatory, a world-first, continent-wide network consisting of approximately 360 devices that record 24-7. The sound recorders that we've put out here on Yorker Reserve have been out there during times where the site was inaccessible. So it would have been collecting sound data when we weren't even able to go out there. Hopefully we find some threatened species, some frogs, some birds, and we can actually get a bit of an idea of how the ecosystems are performing. Daniela believes that a noisy landscape is a healthy landscape, and that her recordings, what she calls digital fossils, can be a key to unlocking a new level of understanding about Australia's natural world. There's a whole world of activity happening right now that we would just be unaware of, but sound is the best way that we can connect to that. But if we understand what those sounds mean, we can understand these species and what they need. For 10 out of 10 today, tips and tactics for greatness from two of the greatest athletes of all time. I recently caught up with Tampa Bay Bucks star QB Tom Brady and F1 star Lewis Hamilton to find out what's pushed them to become the best time and time again. You both are, are strikingly similar. I mean, you, you, you both wear helmets to work. You're both very driven. You're in the driver's seat leading a team of people. You have to make split-second decisions with huge implications. What is something that you may see in each other, something innate within each of you that you have in common that has propelled you to greatness? I think probably the things we have in common is, is that, uh, that sheer grit, that focus, that drive to be better, you, you know, that yes, better than you were yesterday. All right. And um, precision. There you go. Um, Attention to detail. Yeah, your precision, man. Ah. <laughs> Tom, you appreciate this. Six months ago, I talked to Lewis, and you may not remember this, but before we started, there was a tiniest thread on his pants, and he asked for some scissors and cut it. And it hit me in that moment. I was like, this is a man who pays attention to the details. Like, how you do anything is how you do everything, right? Yeah. Can you relate to that when it comes to yeah. that precision Lewis is talking about? What I've really been inspired about Lewis over a period of time is, you know, you always see Everyone thinks it's just Lewis and the car, but he recognizes right. it's the everyone behind the scenes that are allowing him to be successful as well. And I've seen him when he wins, and he gives credit to everyone. And I've seen when he loses, you know, how he doesn't, there's never blame associated right. with the two. So I always feel like our best moments in life come when we're facing, you know, our most difficult yes. challenges. Average career is like three and a half years. Lewis, I played nine years. I have a titanium plate, four screws on my neck. I thought that was good. This dude's going to his 23rd season. Both of you, though, just iconic, high level of operation for, for a decade more, right? So uh, what, what keeps you going? What, what drives you? What is it? For me, it's always just been trying to, I always feel like no one cares about what you did in the past. You know, you have to be motivated to be your best this year. Everyone is showing up to buy season tickets for this season, not for what happened last year or two seasons ago. And I feel like when people make the commitment to you, in the end, you want to fulfill that, you know, what they're coming to see. You know, people want to come and see me do great. They want to see Lewis do great. You know, they follow their sports heroes and their favorite sports teams because they want to see you, you know, the, the thrill of victory. And I feel like I want to, when I make that commitment to play, it's a kind of all-encompassing commitment. The greatest of all time. The GOATs. There's some bad men. <laughs> you all are the greatest too. We love all the love we're getting on the comment section at youtube.com slash CNN10. So we're showing some love back. Huge shout out to Man Eye Middle School in Melrose Park, Illinois. Tomorrow is Friday. Can't wait. Crush it today and be awesome. I'm Coy. Thanks for watching CNN10.